The number one question I get is what is the best burner? I asked myself the same question a few years ago, which led to me buying way too many burners. I spent time burning with each one and found something unexpected. It doesn't matter. Most people believe that their work will improve if they just buy a better burner. The secret is, it won't. They all work the same way. I did this piece with an inexpensive burner. I did this one with a pro burner. The burns are indistinguishable. They both look like my work. Burners have their quirks and differences, but the end result is always the same for me. So do you need a good quality burner? Yes, absolutely. But you like literally just told us they all work the same way. Make up your damn mind. Whoa, Jody, be cool. You don't have to get mean. They all work the same way, but the build quality will be different. An inexpensive burner is gonna be made from cheap parts with cheap labor. That will shorten how long it lasts. You'll find that the pens get hotter faster and the parts will wear out sooner. A quality burner will be made from higher quality parts with experienced labor and should last decades. I don't know about the best burner for you, but I can tell you about the best burner for me. I use a Colwood Super Pro 2 for most of my work. I use it for two main reasons. The first is Brenda from the Pyrography Made Easy channel. I learned how to burn by watching YouTube videos and her channel in particular. So buying one made it easier to follow along and use the same settings. The second reason is I'm a guitar player. Wait, like what in the hell does that have to do with burning? Again, Jody, be cool. My favorite guitar amp is the Fender Deluxe Reverb, which was designed in 1963. I like the faceplate and knobs. It's easy to make changes quickly. Do you see a resemblance? The Super Pro controls were already familiar to me. Okay, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. Some burner companies have clever marketing to help them stand out. Let's look at this marketing from Burnmaster. Has up to 130 watts of power. Truthfully, wattage doesn't mean anything. It's a buzzword. The wattage of a particular burner won't tell you a thing about how it actually works. Next it says, the advanced design of the amazing Burnmaster is so superior, it's revolutionary. That's going a bit far in my opinion. Based on my experience using it, it's no better than any other burner. The marketing also says, unlike others, it accepts all major handpiece systems. So instead of being forced to use just one handpiece brand or buying adapters, you can choose and use virtually any handpiece. But later in the marketing, it says, handpieces not included, we recommend Burnmaster brand pens and tips. So yeah, you can use them, we just don't recommend it. But buying a Burnmaster has no advantage over Colwood or JPL. They use the same connectors. So the same thing can be said for those two companies. You have to use an adapter for razor tip pens, and that's included. So technically, yeah, you don't have to buy an adapter, but you still have to use one. These adapters can also be used with Colwood and PJL. I know Burnmaster users are gonna come at me for this, but it's my opinion based on my experience. I have one, I've used it before. More interestingly, not one customer has asked me why I use a Colwood and not the revolutionary 130 watt Burnmaster for their piece. But I get asked that by other pyrographers frequently. If you want to buy a burner because it's popular or stylish, do it. If you're excited when you look at it, you'll use it more. And that's the entire point of having it. So I can't tell you what the perfect burner is for you, but I can give you a few tips when looking. First is check the warranty. Most companies will have a two or three year warranty on their burner, and you can also find at least one company with a lifetime warranty. Warranties are wonderful, but remember if you have to use it, you have to ship that to them and then pay for it to get shipped back. I prefer to use a burner that was made in the country where I live. If there's ever a problem with these machines, I can ship them easily at a low cost and pay for the shipping back. It can be expensive to ship internationally back and forth. The second factor to look at is cost. A quality power supply will cost a bit more. Avoid the wood burning kits with 500 parts in it. Most of those are cheaply made and won't last very long. Also, you won't use 490 of those parts. You're going to use three to five nib shapes, and that's pretty much it. 
but spending more won't always give you better quality. The least expensive burner I have is this Colwood Cub. It was $82 with a cord. The most expensive one I have is this Burnmaster Eagle. It's $239.99 for the power supply alone. That's not including the cord or any pens. You'd think because it costs so much more that it would be so much better. But personally, I would rather use the Colwood Cub than the Burnmaster Eagle. Based on my experience with both of them, it's easier to use, easier to transport. In my opinion, it's not worth the extra money. Another question people ask is, do you need digital? Digital burners are supposed to stabilize the power supply to stop waves. I really don't experience this issue with my analog burners, so I don't know if they'd be worth it for that purpose. They also have numerous settings. One digital burner out there has in its marketing that they have 700 settings. When I'm burning, I mostly use four settings. This is depending on the shade that I want and the tip that I'm using. I pretty much set it and forget it. Another factor with digital is the cost. If you look at Razor Tip's single analog burner, the SK, it's $119. The single input Razor Tip SL1, which is digital, is $195. Now it is more powerful as well, so you would expect it to cost more. Then Razor Tip has their P80, which has a large touchscreen. This is $359 for the single. Now I don't personally feel the need to spend that kind of money on a digital burner, but some people swear by them, so maybe I just don't know what I'm talking about. And the last thing I'll leave you to think about is the size. If you keep your burner in the same place all the time, it really doesn't matter. But if you move it around and store it somewhere, size really does matter. For me, smaller is better. A burner doesn't need to take up much space. Very little room is needed for the circuitry and parts required for a burner. We started by asking, what's the best burner? My answer is the one you have, the one sitting on your desk. Your machine isn't holding you back, you are. Learn how to use it and practice as much as possible. Focus on your technique and not the gear you're using. Success depends on the quality of your work, not the quality of your tools. As always, thanks for watching and happy burning.